And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof, deodorant body powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? Today is back from a visit to San Antonio, Texas, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, one of the bright young wits of radio, television, and the theater, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Guess you look pretty quick, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who tomorrow will spend a day in Dayton, Ohio, Arlene mm -hmm. Francis. <laughs> And on my left, the charming publisher, not only of Random House books, but those wonderful children's books, the landmark books, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And on our left is our peerless newscaster, panel moderator, leader, and occasionally misleader, Mr. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we're going to uh, have some visitors who brought with them some very pleasant, we hope unexpected and difficult occupations, so they'll give the panel some trouble and carry home some prizes. We'll have a famous guest challenger before our experts over there a bit later on, but now it's time to get going with the first of the experts' uh, job. That is, we bring out our first challenger, and they've got to find out what the line is. So would you sign in, please, sir? Jacob, Jacob Hertzberg, is that right, sir? Well, uh, Mr. Hertzberg, would you be good enough to tell us first where you're from? Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. Well, the city of brotherly love sent you here. I send you out with some brothers and sisters. Would you go take a walk in front of the panel, please? How do you do, Mr. Hertzberg? May I see your hands? <laughs> oh. All right, Mr. Hesberg, will you come over here? <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> you come over here and sit down next to us, and I trust that you uh, give them so much trouble that they won't be friends, at least so friendly. We'll give them plenty. All right, good. <laughs> now, on the basis of your handwriting and this uh, handshake and this brief acquaintanceship here, we always give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses, as always, with Miss Kilgallen. I think that Mr. Hertzberg is a diamond cutter. A diamond cutter. Mr. Allen. I think he's a printer's double. Miss Francis. I think he's a marriage broker, if they have those anymore. Mr. Sir. <laughs> I think Mr. Hertzberg repairs watches. No, I'm afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Hertzberg, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... The panel will have to uh, do some digging, Mr. Hertzberg. The rules are uh, very simple. Every time you get a no answer out of them, it'll cost them five dollars. We'll keep a record of that up here. That's all five dollars? Only five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and ten of these no's and you've won the game. All right, Mr. Hertzberg is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, <clears throat> Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Hertzberg, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it a product that benefits people? Yes. Are they uh, happier or better off because of what you do? Yes. Is this anything that would be found in a home? Yes. Would it be found there uh, appropriately? Thank you, Bob. How? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's appropriate to a home. It wouldn't be a comedy thing to have it around the house. Well, if it was in the home, it would be in the home properly, yes. Oh, I see. Uh, do you ever find it anywhere besides a home? Yes. Is it smaller than a piano? <laughs> no. Whoa! <laughs> Is it smaller than a piano? Yes. 
<laughs> I got a wonderful picture in my mind now, the way I think you ought to get. You go on, Miss Dunn. Is it quite a bit smaller than a piano? Is it what? Quite a bit smaller than a piano. Is it quite Yes. A... Is it smaller than an accordion? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you come right out with it? <laughs> Try a harmonica. <laughs> Is it bigger than a harmonica? Yes. And then it's something I could carry around with me. Is it something you could carry around with you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Would it be inappropriate if I walked down Fifth Avenue carrying it? No. Now, wait a minute. Let's, let's have that question again, because this is very tricky. Would you ask that again? Well, I was wondering if it would look inappropriate or odd. Would people notice it uh, and perhaps remark on it if I walked down Fifth Avenue carrying whatever it is that Mr. Hertzberg... If you walked down Fifth Avenue people... carrying it, would it be inappropriate? No. I'm glad to get that no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Ellen. <laughs> it's something then that would it, be, it would be quite normal for a woman to be seen on the street with. No. No, I don't think we can say it would be quite normal because to the degree of usage here, we must take some balance and we cannot allow imbalance into uh, that sort of thing. All right, Miss Benson. Is it a useful product? Yes. Is it also decorative in some way? Yes. Uh, but uh, should it be... Uh, left in a room rather than carried around. No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Seth. Mr. Hertzberg, would you describe this as an article of apparel of some sort? Yes. Is it uh, worn more by one sex than the other? Yes. Would that sex by any chance be the female sex? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gallup. You mean this is something that it would be quite all right for me to walk down Fifth Avenue carrying it, but it would probably belong to my husband? If yes. I did? Let's hope so. And, uh, <laughs> and I wouldn't get laughed, even if it were unwrapped. <laughs> well, no, now we're I... getting into an area which, uh, if you would like to explore it further, we'd be very happy to help you. Well, John, when I describe walking down <laughs> Fifth Avenue, and I don't know why I'm making such a production about walking down Fifth Avenue, but when I described this, uh, you said that it wouldn't startle anybody. And I was assuming, and I hope you were assuming, that I wasn't carrying this in a box or wrapped up and concealed. I meant in full view. I would say this. There is no reason why you should not if you had considered such a purchase for your husband, carry the object down Fifth Avenue. Unwrapped. You might find one or two citizens who would turn and say, well, but it's not untoward per se. Uh, when a gentleman wears this, uh, is it visible usually? Yes. <clears throat> Does he wear it at any particular time of the day or night? Yes, it's a certain... No, 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 we'll have a small conference, wait a minute. No. Hey, it's five down. Oh, what? <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. And I'm going to give you all one minute and a half more on Is this. it worn from the waist up? Is it worn no. from the waist up? That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is it worn from the waist down? Yes. Wow. Very good. And it shows. It yes. has been elicited that it so. Is it in the Pants family? <laughs> no. Seven down the street to go, Mr. Pants. Trousers, just... excuse me. I wonder... I'm sorry. I'm mostly sorry. These trousers that... were made just right. <laughs> Would this then, Mr. Hertzberg, be worn below the knee? Yes. In the region, possibly, of the foot? <laughs> yes. Uh, has no... I, I take it this has nothing to do with, with toes, since it's visible. No. Yes, you take it correctly that it has nothing to do with toes. Might this be worn somewhere around the ankle? Yes. Is this an article of clothing that is worn only by fops and very fancy people like spats and spat lines? You didn't get it, but I'll show you. <laughs> you sit down, sit down just a second. That's what it is, it's spats. Now, wait a minute, Bennett. You have uh, learned that it is a spat, and uh, now you have to tell us what Mr. Hertzberg has to do with spats. 
Well, he looks like to me like a magnificent spat manufacturer. That I think we'd have to buy. Mr. Hertzberg makes men's spats. Here is a sample of one of them. And, uh, Mr. Hertzberg, you gave them a rough time. Congratulations. I'm glad of it, you know, but it wasn't <laughs> rough enough. It wasn't rough <laughs> enough. Well, you did pretty well with the prizes. Thanks for being our guest. It was very nice to have you on What's My Life. Beginning now, let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Norma? Norma Moya, is that right? Where are you from? Wapwallopin, Pennsylvania. Do that again? Wapwallopin, Pennsylvania. From Wapwallopin, Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, uh... If we're going to give the panel a wallop, and you'd better walk down there in front and let them have another look at you, please. Can I shake hands with you? First time I ever shook hands with anybody from Wap Wallop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Moya, would you come over here now, please, and sit down next to me? And as I think you know, at this point, we always give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guess, as always, with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she does fancy beading. Fancy beading? Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen. I think she's a dock walloper. Miss Francis. I think she has a roadside restaurant. Mr. Sir. I think she names Pullman cars. No, nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have another look at Miss Moya. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is, but the panel's got to dig. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Miss Moya, the rules are, I think, known to you. Every no answer you can get out of them costs them $5. We'll keep the record up here. Ten knows you've won the game. All right, Miss Moyer is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work, Miss Moyer? Yes. Moyer? Is it the kind of a thing that uh, I might come into contact with? Yes. <laughs> uh, if I did come into contact with it, might uh, I possibly derive a certain amount of pleasure from... <laughs> Is it possible that a young lady can also use this? Yes. <laughs> Is it in any way connected with uh, recreation or relaxation? Yes. Yes? Let's see. Is wood any part of its makeup? Yes. Uh, might it be nice to have one of these around... A lake or a river, say, uh, during a summer vacation, something of that sort? Yes. To make sure I'm on the right track. Uh, are these big enough for people to get into? Yes. Would it be un unwise to overcrowd one of these? Yes. I take it that I am right in assuming that these are never equipped with a motor, is that right? <laughs> no. Yeah, you are right in assuming that they are not equipped with a motor, yes. Yeah. I don't like that reaction. Uh, uh, if a young man and a young lady happen to get into one of these, does the man have to... Uh, I guess I'm not going to get at it. <coughs> I seem to be way off the track. Arlene, would you like to take over? <laughs> All right, Miss Francis. Well, that's quite a can of tomatoes you just had. <laughs> I wanted to know if he had to do the paddling. That's all I was trying to find out. <laughs> Is this something that should be on the right. Is this supposed to be kept on land? Is this supposed to be kept on land? Or is it found on land, this product? Yes. Is it found on land, preferably to being found on sea? No. Mm, I have a small conference I've been wanting to anyway. <laughs> Pretty sneaky over there. Actually, you posed quite a question. Why, is the damn tibious? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we don't, we don't want to give you any information that would be too helpful, but I think this, that to be completely fair, it, we should say that you see them on land, but it is also equally possible that you might find them at sea. If that might. puts you at sea, that would be I just I certainly fair. have. Yes. Uh, is this in any way uh, something that you might use during a rest period? A rest yes. period? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can rest on it or in it? Yes. Uh, would it ever be found uh, in a garden? <laughs> <laughs> Not a square garden. <laughs> uh, I think. Considering the specific line of questioning there, we would say no, because this is not the sort of thing that you would expect to find in the garden. One down a night ago, Mr. Sir. Well. Miss Moyo, could this possibly be in the sleeping bag family? The sleeping bag family? Would people sleep in it or on it? They could. Well, do they sometimes <laughs> sleep in it or on it? Yes. Is it soft? <laughs> <laughs> well, give us what's hard, and we'll tell you whether it's soft. Well, the, the, all the girls on this program are not hard. They're soft. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's two down and eight to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, but it ruined you. <laughs> uh, what have we determined now about softness? And incidentally, John, you owe the young lady another five dollars. Oh, good. Three down, seven to go. Forgot to flip it to Steve. <laughs> no, no, that's enough. Um, have we just... This, this, we established that this is softer than we are or harder. <laughs> I, Actually, I was confused uh, by that last question. This was so difficult, I just flipped the card anyway. Why don't you oh. listen to it there? Oh. It is well, not hard in the sense of terrible hardness. It is not soft in the sense of terrible softness. It's just comfy. Would you well, say? <laughs> it could be. Oh. Well, is it meant to be, or, or let us say, is it not incongruous when somebody sleeps on or in this thing? Yes, it's, it's not incongruous, would you say? Yes. No. Yes, it's not incongruous, no. Go on. Does it, have, does it have, then, any other use? Does it have any other use? Yes. That's, thank you. That's four down and six to go, and I'm going to give you one more minute, Mr. Allen. This uh, hard and soft confusion seems to me that it might be something like a, a canvas cot or something, which, uh, am I in the right neighborhood, or, or should I get a cab? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think, I think you're in the right neighborhood, yes. Well, uh, is it a canvas cot of some kind? Uh, yes, yeah. I think we have to buy it. Actually, cot, the, uh, the army cot is oh. the general name. Yes, that's fine, Steve, but now you still have to tell me what Miss Boyer has to do with canvas cot. I'd rather have her tell me, but... <laughs> uh, do you sell canvas cots? Right? cots? Sell them, did you say? That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you test... Them? That's six no. down and four to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. You make them. Well, something to do with the making. You have to be more specific. Do you uh, put together the canvas and the cot? No. <laughs> that makes it seven down and three to go. We're looking for one word. Does Mr. she inspect them? That no. makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, she paints them. That's no. nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. She stitches them. Stitches yes. is very close, but that is a no. That's ten down and no more to go. She rivets them. She puts those oh. rivets. Them. And thanks very much for being our guest. It was lovely having you with us. Good night. Good to see you. Graham, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel would know our guest on site, so we have, as always, provided them with blindfolds. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we always dispense with the preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with uh, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Well, judging by the thunderous applause, I would say that you're a familiar person to the public. Are you in the entertainment world of some sort? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever perform outdoors? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Would you say that you were uh, outstandingly a sports personality? Uh, no, I don't think so. One dollar, nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. 
Well, are you more of a show business personality than a sporting personality? Uh, yes, yes. Are you an actor? In any sense of the word. Yeah, yeah, I'm an actor. Are you accustomed to appearing uh, before cameras of any kind? Yeah, sure. Do you appear before motion picture cameras, or have you ever? Yeah. Have you also appeared on television? Yeah. Uh, when you appear in the movies, are you a leading man? When you appear in the movies, are you a leading man? Mm hmm. Yes, I am. You get the girl in pictures sometimes? You get the girl in the pictures sometimes. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, would you describe yourself as a romantic type? No. Two dollars, eh? That's Mr. Allen. Uh, do you also uh, amuse people? I mean, is it part of the nature of your work to, to be funny sometimes in certain roles? Yeah, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Uh... Might you even be either loosely or very definitely referred to now and then as a comedian? Yeah, I share. <laughs> Goodness. Are you over 35? Yes. <laughs> That's as far as I'll go. It's all right. uh, is your chief fame derived from your work in motion pictures? Yeah. Wow. Have I seen one of your pictures, perhaps, at the first-run theater in the last year? Uh, no. Mm, that's three, no. three dollars seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, uh, if you're over 35 and he hasn't seen your picture in the last year, is it possible that you have been in pictures for a great many years? Yeah. Uh, and you are a comedian of, uh, shall we say, very daringly of the old school? Yeah, sure. I mean, unlike uh, uh, Lewis, I mean, you're sort of more like Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> By that, I mean... Yeah. I mean, are you in that, uh, that age group in pictures? Have you been in pictures that long? Yeah, I am. Um, were there uh, lots of pretty bathing girls in pictures that you were in? No. No, I don't. <laughs> we have just about three minutes to go, and it's four down and six to go. Bet it's served. Have you ever appeared on the Broadway stage? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, did you appear in silent pictures? Yeah. Were yeah. you in more silent pictures than talking pictures? Yeah, sure. Did you ever play in a picture in which you were in a football uniform? <laughs> Yeah. Um, were you the type that would hang out of windows and climb up the side of buildings? And... Yes. Uh, Want to borrow my glasses? Uh, <laughs> were you that wonderful comedian Harold Lloyd? Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, one of the nice things about uh, Harold Lloyd being with us tonight is, and you talking about him appearing in, in uh, football uniforms, is this is one of the great classics of, of uh, moviedom, a wonderful picture of yours, the freshman. And it's coming back, and the thing I particularly wanted to ask you is, I know that it's, it's opening here again in New York, I think at the Paris Theater, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Yet this is a picture that, what, goes back to when I was in school, 1925. Uh, 1925, 1925, that's correct. Now, I understand you've got sound with it. What kind well, of sound is uh, it? Merely uh, a scoring. We have background music, that's all. Otherwise, it is, it's all silent, and practically the same as uh, when we first produced it in 1925. Oh, well, you didn't... Uh, Try to make any lip sync or anything no, like that. So no, 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 no. We kept it. We previewed it about five or six times, and we found that the response to it was practically the same as when we first released it. Uh, well, I think it should be, because it's a gem. Yes, Dorothy? John, I, I think that Mr. Lloyd might be interested in knowing that when I was a little girl, and when I last saw the freshman, I cried because they were mistreating him so terribly on the football field. <laughs> so I hope I don't the next time I see him. Well, thank you. And, John, well, may I say that our family are one of the groups that helps make this show of yours 
uh, have such a wonderful high rating. Oh, well, thank you. We I, never miss it. Please. I just hope that your family doesn't think we mistreated you, but we don't have any tears at home. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, and it was good of you to come and be our guest. I know you feel very corny up here. You <laughs> yes. think. Thank you very Awful much. nice to see you. In just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. But first, here is some excellent advice. Stay tuned. There's more black and white overnight coming right up. This Craftmatic Model 2 will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for these answers and answers to a lot of other interesting questions, be sure and be with us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, when once again, StopEt invites you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your lo local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And don't forget What's My Line on Wednesday night on CBS Radio. Till we see you again, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Bennett. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. This has been a Mark Goodson Ghost Rockman production in association with the CBS Television Network.